Good evening, and welcome to the historic Woolsey Hall on the Yale University campus. On behalf of our distinguished guests, faculty, students, staff, and friends assembled in this hall, I welcome the Yale community throughout the world who join us in this musical salute to President Salovey by live video stream. From Yale's founding service in 1701 to the present day, music has permeated this place. 25 to 30% of Yale students participate in scores of curricular and extracurricular music activities. These groups range from a cappella singing to Baroque opera, from jazz ensembles to a Russian course that began 60 years ago, from residential college orchestras to a gamelan society. All that is Yale is illumined by our music. A celebratory fanfare best begins an inaugural concert. And this evening, Mr. President, Professor Thomas Duffy has composed one of these fanfares in your honor, the Circle Fanfare, thoughtfully conceived and crafted by this composer. The fanfare also asks our university organist, Thomas Murray, to respond to the ensembles located around the hall. Perhaps there's some inherent symbolism in this for you, Mr. President. Careful study, careful planning will always require some confident improvisation from you. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Professor Thomas Duffy, composer, conductor, and distinguished university citizen.
Yale was almost 100 years old when Franz Josef Haydn began work on his inspiring oratorio, The Creation. The Reverend Timothy Dwight IV was then president of Yale. Drawing from three textual sources, the biblical books of Genesis and Psalms and Milton's Paradise Lost, Haydn composes a masterful work depicting God's creation of the world. The music reveals Haydn's sense of wonder at God's handiwork. Now two centuries after the first performance of this work, Yale is a rare dwelling place for wonder in our firmament. Here we find inspiration and the courage to create, to discover, to incessantly ask why and why not. Please join me in welcoming our soloist and Marguerite Brooks, conductor of the Yale Camerata, to the podium. Is coming, speaks in the day. The night that is gone to following night, the night that is gone to following night. Thank you. 
Guitar music has enjoyed a long and vibrant history at Yale. Next to voice and piano, the guitar in its many manifestations has been the most popular musical instrument. Graduates from the Yale School of Music guitar program have gone on to have sterling international careers and have been leaders in the field of pedagogy at both university and high school levels. The group tonight consists of current students and graduates hailing from Australia, Uruguay, Germany, Canada, Armenia, and the United States. The two selections we are about to hear tonight reflect the versatility and adaptability of the instrument. Whether Europe during the Baroque or the Brazil of today, the guitar expresses a voice and a culture that is personal, even intimate. Ladies and gentlemen, internationally renowned artist Ben Verdery and the Yale Guitars.
Marta, the next selection honors you. Clearly, your role in Yale's new presidential chapter is one for which we thank you in advance. It seems appropriate then that the Glee Club, Yale's most venerable music group at 153 years, should sing to you. You will hear these words. When the breeze of winter slips through my window, I hear a sound as if an angel with the hands of silk on my bells plays a madrigal. Talin, talin, talan, hear how beautiful is the talin of my crystal bells. Talin, talin, talan, bells that play for me such a sweet song. Laugh, 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 beautiful crystal bells that brighten my hours of pain. Ring, 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 only for me, little crystal bells. The Yale Glee Club, ladies and gentlemen, directed by Jeff Dalma. As your program indicates, Paul Jacobs won a Grammy in 2010, but you will also be interested to know that he won the very first Grammy ever awarded in classical organ performance. In his extensive repertoire are the complete organ works of J.S. Bach and Max Rager. Yes, Paul Jacobs is a prodigious talent, and tonight, he performs the music of another prodigy, Mozart. And he asked that following the Mozart, there be no applause. Mr. President, a commencement is a new beginning. And virtually everyone in this hall who has graduated from kindergarten through graduate school has marched to pomp and circumstance, which, as your program also indicates, first filled this hall many years ago. So tonight, led by Paul Jacobs, we march with you to the new horizons where you will take us with a vision and our work together on behalf of this great institution. Join me in welcoming Paul Jacobs home.
In 1879, Brahms received an honorary doctorate from the University of Breslau. The music faculty member who nominated him, according to folklore, suggested, hinted, that Brahms write a substantial work as a proper thank you for this honorary degree. Of course, there was not to be a fee. Um, he was to be given, or had been given, actually, the honorary doctorate. So Brahms decided he would do this. Tonight, we're going to hear Academic Festival Overture. And in Brahms' hand and with his pen, it was academic. His extraordinary compositional techniques weave together a number of ideas, but what he does with these ideas is integrate student drinking songs. <laughs> There's a certain balance that is important in a university. <laughs> That's what Thursday nights are about here, from what I understand. <laughs> so, Brahms had the last laugh and the honorary degree. The Yale Philharmonia Orchestra from the School of Music, along with members of the incredible Yale Symphony Orchestra under the baton of the Yale Symphony conductor Toshi Shimada, bring us Brahms's Academic Festival Overture, Maestro Shimada and the Orchestra.
It's okay. I was trying to think about what I was going to say about Aldo. <laughs> the Yale cellos have thrilled audiences all over the world. Among their alumni, just to name a few, the principal cellist in the New York Phil and the newest cellist in the New York Phil, the college president, Ronald Crutcher, the distinguished concert artist, Juan Jin, and just scores of cellists who hold university professorships and orchestra positions on several continents throughout the world. Aldo Pariso is the Sanford Professor of Cello. Following a long and brilliant career as a cellist who played in every major, major capital of the world under the leading conductors of that time, he turned to teaching where for the last several decades he has become known as one of a very few teachers, the most elite in his profession. 1958 was a very magical year in Yale history. In 1958, Aldo Pariso joined the Yale faculty. He is the longest serving member of Yale's faculties. In 1958, Peter Salovey was born. <laughs> Seriously though, I mean, Peter is a musician, Aldo is the longest serving faculty member. This seems appropriate to me. Ladies and gentlemen, the beloved director of the Yale cellos, Aldo Pariso.
Yale has had presidents who acknowledged music. Yale has had presidents who supported music. Yale has had presidents who appreciated music. Yale has had at least one president that I know who has understood and loved music. Now Yale has a president who performs music. What is happening to us? Somewhere, Somewhere Plato is really scratching his head trying to think this one through. Now travel back with me to Tom Duffy's fanfare. You heard some unusual instrumentation. You heard clarinets. There was a reason for that. Peter's musical journey began with a study of clarinet. But as he became more and more sophisticated and developed, he became a double bass bluegrass player. What are the odds that any president of an internationally distinguished research university performs bluegrass music anywhere? What are the odds of that? Now or in the future, this would be an interesting bet to take. Peter, I think you're the only one. And you may have thought you might have gotten through this without your own special tribute, but I kind of gave you a hint that something was going to happen about this. But before we get to that, last week I had a call from a dean of a major conservatory who suggested to me that once again, Yale has kind of stepped out in front. He said that now we have the perfect model for a senior professor in music as seen in our president. We have someone who raises money we have a performing artist, and we have a psychologist who studied emotional wellness. We have in our new president uh, a person that we all relate to on any number of levels because in his own way, he meets people where he is and at the very best of what music is. That is precisely what it does. Peter, we take great pleasure in the joy you derive from making music. And it would really be unthinkable to omit a bluegrass tribute to, the, to you this evening. One of your professors of bluegrass is here to play a special tribute to you. Anybody here from California knows that Topanga Canyon is a well-known destination. What you probably don't know is that in the 1970s, they had a well-known banjo contest. And our artist tonight is the winner, the first prize winner, of course it was in 1972, of the Topanga Canyon Banjo Contest. More recently, in addition to his night job as professor of bluegrass, he has a day job here at Yale as professor of psychiatry. I want you to join me in welcoming Oscar Hills, who is going to play Dixie Breakdown. It is, I am sure, a top 10 iTune off their CD, Pick or Perish. Oscar Hills.
Make Our Garden Grow is the final number in Leonard Bernstein's Candide. We'll build our house and chop our wood and make our garden grow. Gardening is familiar to Marta and Peter. And now you are the curators of Yale's gardens. We'll work beside you. We'll work with you. We'll work for you, tilling soil, fertilizing, watering, pruning, to make Yale's gardens grow bountifully wherever they are planted. The Camerata, the Glee Club, the orchestras, two wonderful soloists join Jeff Dalma as he conducts this wonderful piece from Candide.
you have been a wonderful audience, and it has been everyone's pleasure who has participated in this program tonight, Marta and Peter, to give you this send-off gift as you begin this new chapter of your lives. In a moment, we're going to conclude this assembly as only we should with bright college years, but I'm going to ask all of the conductors and soloists to join us on the stage and in front. I know you're going to want to thank them and all of these musicians one more time, and of course, they want to participate as well in bright college years. But before I ask them to come back, there are so many people to thank, and there is no way to call names, but I'm going to ask one person to come out and accept all of your thanks and ours for making this evening possible at the risk of my own life. Our producer, Krista Johnson, has given heart and soul to make this evening so wonderful. And if I can get some of these string bass players to drag her out here, please give her your thanks. Our soloist, our conductors, our other performers, and these wonderful musicians with us, but we invite our soloists and conductors back to the stage for Bright College Years. They're looking for their handkerchiefs. The arrangement of Bright College Years, Mr. President, was especially done in your honor tonight by Colin Britt. It's a new arrangement of Bright College Years for orchestra, organ, and chorus. Before we sing, I'm going to ask for the house lights to come up because the musicians and all of us in the audience want to ask Peter and Marta to stand and let us thank you. Peter, Marta.